trying to put you in the worst mood uh. P1 cleaner than your church shoes uh. Belly point two just to hurt you uh. All red lamps just to tease you uh. None of these toys on lease to uh. Made your whole year in a week to ya uh. Main bitch out of your league to ya uh. Side bitch out of your league to ya uh. House of wanting need a centerpiece 20 racks a table come from Ebony Cut that I ran to skinny pieces Now she clean up with her face while I love my baby Talking money, need a hearing aid. You're talking about me, I don't feel shit. Switch on my side like the Billy Lane. I'm a motherfucking sovereign. Your friend in Saxo. As you know, for each week, I will try to learn a new course of the Google De Data Analyst Certification Program. So for this week, what I have learned is uh, ask questions to make data-driven decisions. Basically, for each week, I will try to tell you what I have learned. For the first week, it is talked about the explain the characteristics of effective questions with reference to the smart framework. Well, recently I say the smart framework or not 
A means specific, which is something that you have to be specific, not something very big. That's not impossible for you to manage. And then it's about the measurable because you have to measure it to be able to handle with it. Otherwise, um, it's something that you cannot measure, you cannot control. Then the achievable, which is something that you can get or you can make. If you, if you cannot make it, then it's something useless. For example, if you if you say that you want to um, if you want to live forever, it's something that's uh, unachievable. Then for the relevant, you must be focusing on your work. So it has to, for whatever you are thinking, it has to be related to the problem you are facing. And then it's a time bounds because you want to solve one problem within a time. You want you you do not want to uh, leave it. Uh, let's say 50, 50 years later, then that that be useless because you would you would probably already be dead. Then it's about discuss the common types. Of all problems addressed by a data analyst. Common problems. Uh, here we got that so six basic problem types. Well, here we go. It's about categori categorizing things, discovering new connections or old connections, finding patterns, identifying things, making predictions, and spotting something unusual. Well, for the categorization as the scene in machine learning, you have to put things in order. For example, the green objects gets into the green category. The yellow objects, you're going to put it into the yellow category, something like that. Then discovery the connections you have to know or discover those things that in connection for example if one thing happened another thing must happen something like that then finding patterns it's uh, something like for example if you get a service of number then you found that for each number it's uh, the previous number aided by one it's it's a pattern then the identifying the things well it's something like the finding patterns but you have to scale up your patterns into a general one then it's making predictions it's very common in our life we are doing the prediction almost every day then for the spotting something that unusual you have to notice those things that unusual in your life for example something that's out of logic all right then it's come to the next week the week two in this one in this week i actually, I actually spent one hour on it discuss the use of data in the decision making process well it's very important because the decision has to come out from those data so that people would uh, have confidence about the decision they're making they're making because it's based on the data and the data is objective compare and contrast data driving decision making with data inspired decision making well for the data inspired decision making it's about when you see some new data and you compare with other data you see something different than from there you come up with an idea this is the data inspired decision making explain the difference between quantitative and qualitative data including reference to their use and specific examples well quantitative data it's about those facts it's about the numbers those effects that could be measured by number well for the qualitative data it's about some characteristics or a human a person or an objective or objective could have for example, I say that someone is beautiful, then this is a quantitative data. But if I say someone is 24 or 23 years old, then it's a quantitative data. And inside of the week three, what we have learned, we discussed the data analysts use of spreadsheets with reference to roles and responsibilities. Um, and we also learned how to use the spreadsheets to complete some basic tasks. Well, for this case, uh, we will learn the spreadsheets. Some of you may not understand what is the spreadsheets. Well, it's something like the Excel. It's something like this. It's a table and you can manage those data inside of the software. But for this case, it's the Google spreadsheets, Google spreadsheets. And also in this course, you have to learn those basic operations. For example, how can you write uh, formulas that does some simple task for example to get the sum of a series of seals or how to get the average number of a series of seals which is kind of useless to me because i already know this long time long time ago and i also could do it with the python's panda packaging so i have no idea why i have to learn this it's too simple and maybe we couldn't use it in our real life as a programmer 
and then it comes to the week four. Instead of this, we have discussed the communication, the best communication practice for the data analyzed, including reference to obvious communication, conflict resolution, and something like that. Well, inside of this section, it talks about some situations where you may find you are very pissed off or very angry. And inside of that, those situations, what you would do to make things go on. For example, if your boss Give you some, give you a task that you cannot finish inside of the deadline or before the deadline. How do you do that? You're gonna write an email to explain that um, you think that to finish that that task needs more time than this in a polite way or something like that. Discuss the importance of focus on stakeholders' expectations. Well, for the data scientist or for the data analyst in this course, in the whole course, what I have learned is that those data analysts what they do as to do the data analyst for the stakeholders. What is the stakeholders? Stakeholders is those people who put their money and earn and energy into a project or into a business. They are the boss of those business. You have to help them to make their business running better, something like that. You serve for them, so you have to focus, you have to know what they expect. And then as says it talks about the common limitations with data. For example, it's 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 about for example if you are choosing the samples uh what kind of people you should ask for those data you should not only choose the men but also the women and also if you are doing the investments oh sorry doing the asking for those people you will you you don't want to get biased so what do you do is to take those people randomly something like that so basically, this is what I have learned in the course two. And I think it's still not that useful at this moment. Maybe the next week, I will learn something more that would be helpful to my career or be able to let me to be able to do something real. I don't know, but I, I still have hope on those courses since um, it's made, by, it's made by, by Google, right? And I love this company. It really taught me a lot over the years. Okay, I think this is today's video. I hope you enjoy it and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.